Yeah, what's up guys and um, welcome back to the channel. My name is Heavy Josh. I'm a professional photographer and a filmmaker based in Lagos, Nigeria. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Godox AD600BM. Um, sometimes, uh, two years ago, I made a video unboxing this baby boy. I'll drop the video in the link below and um, I really got a lot of views and you guys really asked a lot of questions about this AD600. So today I'm going to be making an in-depth video on how to use this AD600, the buttons and how to configure all of them. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so um, just like you know, the AD600BM, it's a battery power strobe. The battery power strobe uses a battery instead of a monolight that connects directly to electricity. So I want to assume you know how to remove and attach your battery. If not, there's a locking mechanism on that here. I can drag it out, push it up. This is the battery. When I actually got mine, I got an extra battery because you know, I shoot a lot. So I just needed an extra battery. So I'm going to fix this back gently. Now let's get to the various parts and uh, the various buttons and functionality of the AD600. So starting first, uh, we have the on off button over here. Hold down to turn on. So when you turn it on, um, you notice that the LCD just comes up and then let's start with the button. The first one here that has a red indication indicator is a, a test shoot button so this helps you to just test run your strobe to ensure that it's working so to do that i'll have to remove the cover cap of this so there's a little locking mechanism here i can use this to remove the cover cap so once i hit the red indicator here that fires the strobe to tell me yes my strobe is working perfectly so moving on to the next one is the on off button just hold down to turn on and hold down to turn off so moving on to the third button we have um, the model bulb button which is the third one here it helps to turn on the model bulb the model bulb comes in um, three different intensity 25 75 and 100 so for example if i give the model bulb a tap light comes on 25 75 and 100 the model bulb is very essential if you're shooting in a dark place and you need to get focus model bulb is, model light is also very good in you know simulating and uh, brightening up the environment before taking a picture so i'll hit it one more time to turn it off so moving on from that we have um, the high speed sync button the hd 600 is very very nice you don't really actually need to activate this um, high speed button reason being that um, once you connect your trigger directly on your camera um, the AD600 can sense high speed sync itself so it automatically moves to a high sync speed mode so you don't need to set any high speed sync or anything it moves there automatically so after the high speed sync we have the menu we have the menu the menu has a um, lot of functionality and lot of you know so let's start from the first one the first one under this is beep the beep simply means when you when the strobe works do you want to hear the sound that says beep beep if you want to you can turn it on if you want if you don't want to you can turn it off so for today uh let me turn it on so if i test on this strobe you hear the sound like boop 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 that is the sound however when i work in studio most times that sound can be very distracting, especially when I'm having a baby photography, when I don't want noise or I'm having something very special. So I, will, I usually turn it off. It will go off. Now let's move on to the next one here, which is the slave. The slave mode. Now, if you do not have a trigger, you can use other source of lighting to trigger this AD600 with which are usually called master line then you have this one work as a slave whenever it sees any light coming like a strobic light it will also work and that is why they call it slave mode 
so it has to be triggered by a master strobe so um the slave mode you have um i can eat and use this uh this button dial to go to s1 or s2 there are s1 and s2 s1 is where you want to be for the slave mode however the s2 is um majorly used for ttl ttl through the lens um, i think you will not need that for beginners so I will, I will always stick with S1, but because I'm not using it for slave mode today, I will use this my mode dial, this dial to go back to off. I'll turn it off. Now the next one after this slave is fan. If I hit enter, there is an inbuilt fan inside the AD600 that helps to reduce the level of heat. However, you can always turn off the fan because sometimes the noise from the fan can be very annoying. You can actually turn it off or you leave it on automatic i think you should always leave it on automatic because if you turn it off it's going to overheat and once it overheats you don't want to spoil your 8600 so moving on from fan uh, we have um sleep when your strobe is turned on but not in use how long do you want it to stay on before it automatically triple and goes off so yeah i have just eat sleep it's set then you can use this dial to change from one hour two hour three hour and off so i will literally just leave it one hour if i'm not using it within an hour I'll just go off so the next one we have is the light this light has to do with the health cd display if you don't want the health cd display you can actually turn it off or you can actually set the timer how long do you want this light to stay on before it goes off so most times i will just leave it on because um, the heat this is only doesn't consume much of a battery like that so i just love the you know the aesthetics of having this lcd turned on moving on we have delay delay is the next one delay is just simply used if you want to you know take your time before the strobe works for example if you want a five minute five seconds delay ten seconds delay where you uh, hit the trigger but it's still going to, like a self timer so when you hit the trigger the flash is not going to work immediately it's going to take a little time depending on how much of time you set in the delay i think this is not very important and then let's move on to the next one so after delay we have units all lcds all of this and all very important and then the last one here we have reset if you ever get lost or you've pressed so many things you can't remember on your stroke just make sure you go back to this reset hit ok then reset everything back to the normal way it's supposed to be so that is it for all the menu now let's move on to the next one which is the mode there are two ways you can use this um 8600 the first mode is the manual mode while the other mode is a multi mode the manual mode is good it gives you more flexibility you can control um connect so many strobes together like five strobes and you know use them individually so i would highly recommend using the manual mode just keep the multi mode aside so that is it for them then the next one we have the the wireless we have the optical wireless this helps to indicate less communication it's um, it's an indication from godox that tells you that um, this strobe is ready to pair wirelessly with um, any kind of trigger that is from godox however because godox produces um triggers for different brands of camera whatever camera you're connecting it whatever trigger whatever camera you're using with the hd 600 it has to be indicated beside this uh, wireless connectivity signal over here however if you don't want to use the godox trigger you want to use another trigger from another brand you have to hit this um, button once so that it takes you to where you can use any kind of random trigger but if you intend using godox triggers you have to make sure it's back to universal this icon simply means a universal way of connecting so i think that is it then um, moving on from there 
we have the group and channel button which is the last button to my right the group and channel button the group is used to uh, arrange individual strokes for example this stroke has a five group a b c d e if i need to make this my a light i may have another light b c d e i can actually allocate each of the strobes a different alphabet that is their group however to make sure they work together i have to arrange them on the same channel so this strobe comes with um, 32 channels just in case you go for an outdoor or you're somewhere and uh, there's a photographer shooting on channel one you can move to channel two if someone is on channel two you can move to four and so on like that just ensure you're not on the same channel with any photographer in any event or any space where you guys are working so to change the group all you have to do is to eat the group and channel button once it's going to change from group a to e however if you want to change the um, channel you have to hold down once you hold down um, the letters the number is going to be in the black bracket then you can use the dial here to increase or decrease the number to whatever channel you want i think that's just the basis for all of this here now let's move on to this other side here that has the flash tube one of the things i find um, interesting about the evolution of a flash tube is uh, old strobes usually have the flash tube built in built in built but um the hd 600 you can actually pull out the flash tube so in any scenario where you have it broken or where you have it burnt, you can actually go to the market to get a new one without going with the strobe. Most old strobes, you have to go with the entire unit. So this is a big thumbs up to Godox for bringing such a nice technology. However, the modeling light is built in. I don't know how long this modeling light is going to last before the bulb won't get worn out or everything. But according to Godot, it's supposed to last a long time. So this is the modeling bulb. So I'll turn this off and insert this back into it. Now, let's look at um, other things. Below, above this, we have a... Above this, we have a battery indicator here. This is the battery indicator that tells you uh, if the level of your battery, if the battery is a charge or the battery is low. If the battery is low, you find one red indicator. If the battery is charged, you find one or two green indication. So you can also charge the battery through the power output here. Yeah? I will always advise you get two batteries so that while you're using one, you can charge the other. So apart from that, we also have um, we have a sink port. The sink port has um, a 3.5 mm jack and it has a micro USB. These two is very necessary for firmware updates. You understand? So um, we also have a wireless port here. You can use this for connecting remotely triggers. If you want to connect triggers remotely, you can actually use this full size usb here to connect remotely to any kind of uh, trigger so that's the basic way of using the godox ad600 so before i call this a wrap using in studio the godox ad600 is one of the best studio lighting we've used so far and um, it keeps you know it gives us hope that there is a new future in photography where new technology and all of this can you know can be greatly improved so um to use this in studio i always do one over 16 or one over eight i've never used this in full power when i mean full power i mean one over one and uh, let's say half power one over two it's always from one over four one over eight and one over 16. however if you don't know what that means that simply means uh, uh, at 1 over 16, 1 over 4, I'm using quarter power. At 1 over 2, I'm using half power. So I even don't even use this at half power. So if you plan on getting this, 
I would advise you don't use it at um, you know full power because if you use it at full power there is heavy tendency you're going to drain the battery faster than the normal one but um, overall this is just how it works if you need to change the power output you can just use the dial without touching any other thing just use the dial to move from 1 over 1 to 1 over 128 this is very simple and this is very easy once you're ready to go you just attach a modifier to it and you can go outdoor connect a remote trigger to it and use it wirelessly out of for the sake of this tutorial i have a i have an expo trigger i use with uh, this strobe and then um, overall i enjoy the expo trigger in one of the upcoming videos i'm going to make a review of the expo trigger and how to connect it with the godox ad600 so thank you very much for stopping by i hope you guys have learned something in today's video if you have questions observations and inquiries and all of that don't forget to drop them in the comment section i'm also going to drop my mail so that you can reach out if you have questions and then you know thank you very much for stopping by i'll see you guys in the next one peace out cheers